worship your name today, God. Oh, you deserve all the praise. You deserve all the honor. And Lord God, we cry. We cry out to you today, Lord. And we want to tell you how much, Lord God, you deserve it all. Everything, everything, all the way to the marrow of our bones, God. You deserve it all, Lord. belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs
deserve your praise. Does he deserve the honor and the glory? Amen. Hallelujah. Um, youth Church uh, is getting ready to take place in a back. So young people, um, uh, head back this way to the fellowship hall. Um, if you're 18 and under, or if you're under 18, uh, youth church, you can go back this way. There you go. Praise God. Praise God. We've got things that are engaging and on your level. Amen. When, when a, many of us were young, youth church would sit beside your mama and shut your mouth. Can I get an amen? There was no, we're going to teach you on your level. Amen. It was your level was hush, and you better like it too. If you will, stand with us and turn to Matthew, the 21st chapter. The 21st chapter of Matthew, and I'll be uh, reading verses 1 through 11 from the New International Version. Matthew, the 21st chapter. And we know that it is Palm Sunday. Seven days before Jesus rose again. And five days before he died. Palm Sunday. And the word reads as such. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. We know a colt is uh, a young donkey. Um, untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say, that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. Amen. Uh, this took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. And this is the prophecy. Say to daughter Zion, see, your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the foal or the baby or the calf of a donkey. Disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. They put their overcoats on the donkey for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road. So you have his disciples who put their cloaks on the donkey uh, so that Jesus would have some padding. And then you had the people who were at the entrance to Jerusalem placing their overcoats and cloaks on the road so that the donkey would not step on dirt but would step on their cloaks. And while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road, crowds that went ahead of them uh, and those that followed shouted Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Hosanna. Hosanna meaning save now. Save now. When Jesus entered to Jerusalem the whole city was stirred and asked who is this? The crowds answered this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Do you know the man from Galilee? Hmm. For just a few minutes today. You can go, yes. Hmm. Jesus rode in peace so that we could live at peace. Jesus rode in peace so that we could live at peace. Can we pray? Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Break me. Melt me, mold me, make me. And when you remake me and reshape me, 
We make me a vessel that is fit for your use, God. Lord, we pray that your anointing would continue to saturate this place, God, because we know that the anointing teaches all things, and the anointing also breaks yokes. So, God, we pray that yokes would be broken in this place, and we pray that there would be teaching and learning in this place on this day, at this time, in this season, God. And finally, Lord, we pray that uh, someone, based on the uh, words that have come forth in song, and the word of God that will come forth, the preached word of God, what the Gentiles used to call the foolishness of preaching, that someone would come asking, what must I do to be saved? This is our prayer, and we pray it in Jesus' name. And all of God's people say it. Amen. Amen. You may take your seats. Jesus rode in peace so that we could live at peace. Amen. Now, we appreciate Brian for coming back so we could just get a little bit of 11 o'clock Hammond. Ooh, we've, been, we've been getting 8 o'clock Hammond, but we hadn't had our dose of 11 o'clock Hammond. And you all, he and Sister Joyce, they, they, the praise team practices together, so please don't think we brought somebody in as an affront to Sister Joyce. We, we don't do that disrespecting, okay? Like the dude from the N1 video said, he said, ain't nobody disrespecting. Ain't nobody disrespecting. Amen. They practice together. And you notice that the lead musician during 11 is Sister Joyce. And you notice who didn't take over the 11 o'clock service? Brother Brian. He played his role. He played his part. And so we don't do that disrespecting piece. Amen. It is good to hear some hamming in the 11 o'clock service, though. Thank you. <laughs> to God be the glory. Jesus rode in peace so that we could live at peace. Uh, one of the stories that I teach in English 11 is a story entitled A Pair of Silk Stocking, Stockings by Kate Chopin. And uh, it's set in the late 1800s. And uh, it deals with a woman, she's, her name is Mrs. Summers, S-O-M-M-E-R-S. -S -S. I know Summers is usually S-U-M-M-E-R-S, -M -M -E but hers is S-O-M-M-E-R-S. -M -M -E she's a mother of four. Remember, this is the late 1800s. Uh, she's a married mother of four. Um, she was raised wealthy, uh, but she married poor. And uh, she was a good mother. She sacrificed for her kids. She loved her kids. And one day she found $15 in her dress pocket. It'd be nice when you go to put on a pair of pants or a coat and you find some extra money that you didn't know you had in them. It's like, thank you, Jesus. Yes. And she found $15 in one of her pockets. Now, here's the thing. Since it was the late 1800s, $15 uh, then was like $470 now. So she found a wad in one of her dress pockets, amen? So initially, Miss Summers was gonna buy her kids some clothes, and, uh, and uh, she already had in mind what she would buy for the girls and the boys. Uh, and once the, the day came that she went to town, uh, she went in looking for bargains. She was a bargain hunter. How many bargain hunters do we have in here? And you know you can shop with the best of them. Mm -hmm. You can take $40. You can pop some tags with only $20 in your pocket. And you know how to find them bargains. Yeah, Miss Summers was one of those. Yes, I live with one. Amen. She could squeeze blood from a turnip. To God be the glory. Uh, Mrs. Summers was one of those bargain hunters like that. And she went in the store ready, poised and ready to find some bargains. And remember, I told you she grew up rich, but she married poor. And when she got in the store, she happened uh, uh, in the, to be in the hosiery section. And, and there were still silk stockings or hoses hanging up. And she ran her hand across a pair. And she was, <laughs> the stockings took her back to her childhood to the time when her family could afford, afford silk stockings and when uh, her family could afford the finer things in life. Uh, the feel of those stockings.
took her back to a time when life was simple. Took her back to a time when life had no work, when she had no worries. And, and it took her back to a time when she was young and she had that blissful, ignorant peace. Do you remember when you were young and you had that blissful, ignorant peace? You were poor, but you didn't know you were poor because there was always plenty of rice and some chicken on the table and some gravy and some biscuits on the table. You didn't have, but you didn't know you didn't have, or even if you knew you didn't have, you didn't know how much you didn't have that you didn't have. That, that, that ignorance, at that, that time when ignorance was bliss, it took her back to a time when life was simple. And uh, so she purchased the stocking. What she did, and she hadn't had silk stockings in so long, she took and put them on in the restroom and wore them out of the store. You know how it was when you weren't used to buying new sneakers and you went and bought your new sneakers in the mall and you went in the restroom and you didn't wear them out of the store. You're not uncouth. <laughs> but you did go in the restroom up the, up the way from the mall and you put your sneakers on and wore them out of the Nobody did that but me and, 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 and ma'am here. Oh, y'all hoity-toity, okay, okay. She wore those stockings out of the store and, uh, and then she, she purchased a pair of silk gloves and then she purchased a pair of nice shoes. I think she may have got some Jimmy Choo's or some Prada. Then after that, she took herself to lunch and went to a matinee at the theater. Uh, she wasn't a bad mother, church. She wasn't a selfish mother. But this was a time when just for a few minutes, a few minutes, she took her focus off of everything else that normally occupied her mind. The kids, her husband, fixing meals, washing clothes. Ladies, men, you can help me. Wiping noses, cleaning behinds, fussing about toys left out doing homework and all the stuff that weighs on your mind. Am I right about it? Yeah. So for a minute, she took her mind off that. And uh, what she did was that she used the money to purchase just a few minutes of peace. Peace is one of the most important things in life. Am I right about it? I don't have to be rich as long as I can have some peace. Don't have to have a lot of friends. All I need is some peace every once in a while. I don't even have to be in perfect health as long as I can have some peace. Can I get, a, can I get an amen? Yeah, the songwriter said, when peace like a river attended my way. When I got that kind of peace, uh, then he says, when sorrows like sea billows roll. As long as I got that peace like a river, then when sorrows like sea billows roll, I don't care what my lot is. Thou has taught me to say it is well with my soul. As long as I got a little bit of peace, it can be well with my soul. Can I get an amen? Yeah. And so, when we usually think of this time of year, we think of, uh, in 8 o'clock, say we think of the resurrection. We think of Easter baskets. You remember those Easter baskets we used to get? And somebody in the 8 o'clock service, and we think of that chocolate bunny that we used to devour. Some of y'all bit the head off the chocolate bunny first. And then you're looking through that tissue paper for those seven jelly beans that were in that plastic container. Yeah, or that little plastic egg, you cracking that plastic egg. They thought of this time of year, they thought of Easter, they thought of all those things, they thought of um, um, the fact that if you were going to church then, then maybe, just maybe, you got a new Easter suit. Mm hmm Standing up at church with a new Easter suit all stiff. Because you had your new suit on. People thought of a whole lot of things when they thought of this time of year, but very but nobody at eight o'clock said they thought of peace. And what I want you to see today is that not only did Jesus purchase your resurrect purchase your um, your life and your salvation with his blood, but he also purchased some peace 
along with that. And I told them, uh, you can tell me I'm going to heaven, but it might not mean as much if I don't have no peace down here. You can tell me it's going to be a good time up there, but if I don't have peace down here, then I might get lost and get depressed trying to get up there because I have no peace down here. Can I get an amen? And so Jesus knew that. And one of the things that he did, he did not just purchase your salvation, he, uh, uh, your salvation for the hereafter. He purchased some peace for the right now. Can I get an amen? Amen. And we're going to walk through the text and we'll, 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 we'll go swiftly. So in the Bible, it's Palm Sunday. We're going through the text, Bible scholars. Five days before Jesus was crucified. Seven days before he's raised from the dead. And, and he's about to ride into Jerusalem. One of the best scriptures in the Bible was that he was doing stuff and then he turned his face toward Jerusalem. Jerusalem was the place of his fate. Because he knew he was going there to die at the hands of not the Roman government, but the church people. Not the people, and, and, and there were Romans who whipped him, but guess what? The people from the church arrested him. It was the place of his feet, and it was also the place of his destiny. Because he knew they were going to whip him all night. He knew they were going to spit on him. He knew they were going to mock him. He knew they were going to place a crown of thorns on his head. He knew they were going to beat him and say, prophesy and tell me who hit you. He knew they were going to nail him to an old rugged cross. He knew that he was going to give up the ghost. He knew they were going to lie him in a borrowed tomb. He knew he was going to lay there all Friday night. He knew that he was going to lay there all Saturday. But he also knew that early early Sunday morning death had to let go of him and set him free it was a place of his fate and the place of his destiny so Jesus turns his face toward Jerusalem he's about to ride into Jerusalem and he tells his disciples look I'm going to need you to go to Enterprise rent a donkey and get me a donkey and a calf and he said, when you go into Bethphage, you're going to find a donkey and you're going to find its calf or colt there. And he says, and you bring them back to me. And he says, if anybody asks you, if the owner asks you about them, you tell the owner that the Lord has need of them. Now, many people think that Jesus bogarted somebody's donkey. And he was a cattle rustler. But there is this principle, this Roman law. It's a, it's, a, it's a Roman or civil law known as Angaria. And this law says religious leaders and politi political leaders, excuse me, could request livestock from an owner. And Jesus, being a religious leader, could say, I need to commandeer this donkey for a season. You're going to get the donkey back, but I do need to commandeer this donkey for a season. Are you with me? So the disciples go into Jerusalem, and they find the calf and the donkey. And they bring them to Jesus. And Jesus doesn't get on the donkey because somebody else has ridden it before. And Jesus doesn't take anybody's seconds. You know that, right? If Jesus ain't first, he don't want to be nowhere. Come on, can I get an Amen. Many of us ain't getting the blessings that we think we should get because Jesus is in second place. And if he's going to be in second place, you might get that second place blessing. But if you put him first, and God is a jealous God too, you know that, right? You thought your girlfriend Tammy was jealous? Uh-uh. You thought your boyfriend Chuck was God is a jealous God. And so God says, you know what? I don't want to ride the thing that has been ridden. I want to ride the thing that has never been ridden before because I'm getting ready to go do something that has never been done before. Are you with me? Yeah. And you know the story. Jesus rides the calf into Jerusalem. And he knows that the Israelites are going to celebrate him and shout Hosanna today. But he also knows that five days later, they're going to shout, crucify him. Jerusalem is the city of his fate and the city of his destiny. It was significant, church. Let's go next step, Bible scholars. It's significant that Jesus rides a donkey into Jerusalem. 
Wouldn't you think that a conquering king would ride a steed into Jerusalem? Uh, a good stallion into Jerusalem on a good western saddle? How many of you know about the western saddle? That saddle, when you soap it down, when you ride the horse, it squeaks, it goes, arr, 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 and it does it in the rhythm that the horse rides in. You would think that a conquering king would ride a, 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 a steed, a stallion into the city to say, I'm here, deal with it. And I've come to conquer. But Jesus didn't. He rode on the donkey. And according to Jewish tradition, three types of people rode donkeys into the city. First, merchants rode donkeys into the city, usually. Second, um, priests rode donkeys into the city. And third, men of peace rode donkeys into the city. Merchants, priests, men of peace. Say it with me. Merchants. Priests, men of peace. One more time. Merchants, priests, men of peace. These are the people who usually rode a donkey in the city. Well, it's appropriate for Jesus, isn't it? Yes. After all, he was a, a mer he was a merchant because in five days he was going to purchase our redemption and purchase some peace with the blood from his veins. Am I right about it? After all, he is, not was, but is a priest. And he's not just a priest, he is the high priest. Can I get an amen? And it was appropriate for Jesus to ride a donkey in the city because he was a man of peace. Isaiah 53, 7 lets us know that Jesus was oppressed and afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Pastor, that couldn't have been me. No, that couldn't have been you. Because you ain't Jesus. Because I would have said something. I know. But Jesus was oppressed and afflicted. But he opened not his mouth. And then Isaiah says, he is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And then he says, as a sheep before her shearers is dumb or mute. So Jesus opened not his mouth. 8 o'clock service. He's a man at peace because at 8 o'clock service, we said it, uh, that we used to say it like this in church. He never said a mumbling word. Can I get an amen? He was a man of peace. They hung him high, stressed him while he never said a mumbling word. We know he said, I thirst. We know he said, into thy hands I commit my spirit. But you know what we mean. He ain't fuss. He didn't protest. He didn't say, I'm Jesus. And if you touch me one more time, I'm going to show you who I am. You know what? I can mildew and barbecue. He didn't do that. Jesus let them put him on a cross. And I told 8 o'clock, um, this is a side note. The fact that he was a man of peace was a sign of meekness, yeah. not weakness. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, don't get it twisted. <laughs> don't get it twisted. This was meekness, not weakness. Because guess what? He could have called down 10,000 legions of angels. Not 10,000 angels, 10,000 legions of angels. And that's one, two, three, four characters. That's a whole lot of angels, ain't it? He could have called down 10,000 legions of angels, but he didn't. This was meekness, not weakness. John 10, 18, Jesus said, No man taketh my life. Lay it down. I give, I'm giving my life. I'm letting you do this. And then Jesus said, if I, if I lay down my life, then guess what I can do? I can take it back up again. You're not in control of this. I'm in control. This is meekness, not weakness. Meekness is power under control. A man of peace can ride a donkey into the city. A merchant can ride a donkey into the city and a priest. Then in verses 8 and 9, Bible scholars, because I know some of you like, hold up, is he still in the word? Yeah, I am. Verses 8 and 9. As he rode into, the, into to Jerusalem, people threw their cloaks and they threw palm branches in the road and they shouted, Hosanna, save now. 
Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. They thought Jesus had come to save them from the Roman government. How many of you have ever made that mistake? You thought Jesus came to save you from one thing, but he came to save you from the other thing. You thought Jesus came to save you, was coming to save you from your boss giving you a hard time, your new boss. Uh, but Jesus came to save you from that laziness that you have been putting forth with your old boss. Yeah, we don't like that, Pastor. I know you don't. Uh, you thought Jesus was coming to save you from that person at work who was giving you a hard time. But no, Jesus came to save you from not looking behind you, not checking behind yourself. He, kept, he came to save you from not being thorough. And once that person came in, you checked it twice, didn't you? Once that fussy person came in, you made sure that you did it right, didn't you? That's because you could have done it right from the start. Can I get an amen? amen. Sometimes we think Jesus is saving us from one thing, but Jesus is sa sometimes he's saving us from something else. Can I get an amen? amen. If they thought Jesus was saving them from the Roman government and, uh, and bringing them peace from their oppression. Well, why would they think this? Who told them that? Who told them that? Well, if you look in Luke, the second chapter, and you know the story from Luke, the second chapter. Uh, this is when Mary brought forth her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the, in the end. Let's do that. Let's take two because y'all slow. It's too early for y'all to be sleepy. Tell your neighbor, wake up. Wake up. She wrapped her, and guess what? If I got a scream in your ear to keep you asleep, to keep you from going to sleep, go to sleep. Okay? Here we go. I'm preaching and teaching the word of God. Let's go. Here we go. Then she wrapped him in swaddling clothing, laid, and clothing and laid him in the manger. Here we come to your part. Because there was no room for them in the yeah. end. And then you know the story. And there were in the field. In the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. Somebody say, so afraid. And the angel said to them, what? Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people, for unto you was born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which, uh, is, whose name is Christ the Lord. And, and, and then the angel kept going and said, and this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in the manger. And then here's the part where they thought that Jesus was bringing peace to earth and peace to their outside situation. Then the Bible says, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and singing glory to God in the highest and on earth what? Peace, Peace and goodwill toward me. That's where they thought that Jesus had come to bring peace to their external situation. But they were wrong. Jesus didn't come to bring peace to their external situation. Jesus came to bring peace to their internal situation there's no need for Jesus to bring peace to your external situation if he doesn't bring peace to your internal situation because all you're going to do is go and find another external situation that matches your internal situation and you're back on your knees praying for the same thing. God change my external situation. Change my circumstances. When he changes your circumstances, if you don't let him change your insides, if you, if, if you don't let him transform you by the renewing of your mind, then you can't prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. And you end up going back into the same situation Situation you left him. And so Jesus and God, knowing, having all wisdom, knows that I need to change their internal situation. Because that means they can say, Be not dismayed, whatever be tied. I know that God will take care of me. 
If I change your internal situation, you will be content in whatever situation you find yourself in. If you change your internal situation, you will tell somebody, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with, with the glory that shall be revealed in us. If I change your internal situation, then there's the change. External situation won't matter. They thought that Jesus said and that the angel said there was going to be peace on earth. And we thought that too, didn't we? How many of you thought that? You read the scripture, you thought that? I did too for years. But a few years ago, I looked at another version of this. The NIV of Luke 2 14 says, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Doesn't say peace on earth. The Christian standard Bible says glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to whom, to the people whom he favors. How many of you blessed and highly favored? That's where your peace is right there. Amen. So what's the point? And, and, and we're moving fast. What's the point? The Israelites were thinking of the wrong peace. Again, they were thinking peace for the nation, not peace for the heart. They were thinking peace for the people and not peace for the soul. Are you with me? And we know that that's not true. You, there will not, let me say this, and this is prophetically, and it's not prophetically because I'm doing this when I'm getting the word from God, in Revelation 21 of the prophetic word. The book of Revelation lets us know that there will not be peace on earth until, the, until death is thrown into hell, until Hades is thrown into hell, until those who are not in the Lamb's book of life are thrown into the lake of fire. There will not be peace until that time. And then you'll see the new heaven, new earth, and new Jerusalem. Are you with me? And so now, let's go. Jesus rides into Jerusalem. The people celebrate him. And he rides into Jerusalem in peace. But he does not ride in peace so that he can conquer the Roman government. Jesus rode into Jerusalem in peace so that we could be, so we could live at peace. peace with what pastor everything is fine you know I go to church at peace with what pastor you know I got on this fake smile that says everything is okay at peace with what pastor you know I got on my almost Easter suit my Palm Sunday suit everything is fine you know sometimes church people will fool you with that everything is fine right Sometimes they'll fool you with that blessed and highly favored too, won't they? Blessed are the Lord. Woo, child. Woo, girl, it's so good. And you like, dang, I must be doing something wrong because all hell is breaking loose in my house and she always real fine. But as soon as you look behind the door, it's like, oh, you got a mess behind your facade too. Okay. Jesus rode in, uh, it rode in peace so that we could live at peace real fast. Live at peace with what? He wrote in peace so that believers could live at peace with each other and with other unbelie and with unbelievers. Are you with me? And I told 8 o'clock, you know people are fickle, aren't we? We wishy-washy, aren't we? Sometimey, aren't we? Some people are not as sometimey as others, but we pretty sometimey as people. Am I right about it? I told them that people will shout Hosanna to you one day and then they'll shout, crucify you the next day. Am I right about it? People will hang your jersey from the rafters one day, and the next day, if you make them mad, they want to hang you from the rafters. Am I right about it? People will throw stones with you one day, and the next day, they will throw stones at you. Am I right about it? People will carry your knife one day, and the next day, as soon as you uh, turn your back, they will put that knife in your back. Am I right about it? People are fickle. And so Jesus wrote in peace 
so that we could live at peace with each other. comes out better. Can I get an amen? amen? He rode in peace so we could live at peace with each other. Yeah. Second, he rode in peace so that we could live in peace with our humanity. And, and I'm not going to talk about um, anybody's church folk, but my own church folk that I grew up with. Uh, there was a whole lot of lying about their humanity. They were good people. They were good people, but they didn't acknowledge that they had that sin, that bad sin, that thing. And, and when you look behind the curtain, when you got a little older and you look behind the curtain, you notice that there was a whole lot of stuff going on. Can I get an amen? Yeah, I'm not going to talk about anybody's church folk but mine. And look, they didn't, they didn't acknowledge their own humanity. Because Romans 3.23 lets us know that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All have done it. And I need church people to stop talking in the past tense about you being, uh, you being a sinner. Because you still are a sinner. You're just a sinner saved by grace. Can I get an amen? Jesus rode in peace so we could live, live in peace with our humanity. And, and we blame it on all sorts of things, don't we? We blame our humanity. Uh, and, and I went to Jamie Foxx on 8 o'clock, so I may as well do it at 11. Doesn't matter if you blame it on the booze that's got you feeling loose. Doesn't matter if you blame it on the throne that's got you in the zone. Doesn't matter if you blame it on the henny that's got you feeling dizzy. Doesn't matter if you blame it on something else. You can blame it on the rain. You can blame it on the a a a a a alcohol all day long. But you are human. You sin. You have some stuff with you. And you have to, at a point, come to grips with your own humanity. Jesus rode in peace so that we could live at peace with our humanity. Not with our sin, with our humanity. Knowing that until they roll you in the church feet first and they put you across here, that you're going to have something that you feel, you're going to have some kind of thorn in the flesh. Because as long as you have that thorn in the flesh, then you get the grace of God. Mm. He rode in peace so that we could live at peace with our humanity. Romans 8 declares that uh, uh, um, uh, there is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. He wrote in peace so that uh, uh, people wouldn't be able to condemn you. And if people uh, want to condemn you, then let's go a step higher. Jesus rode in peace so God couldn't condemn you. You realize God can't condemn you unless you let go of his hand, right? There is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. And if God can't condemn you, and if God won't put you on trial here, and if God says there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, what can man do to me? Don't live at peace with your sin. Live at peace with your humanity. That you, like me, mess up sometimes. How many of you messed up earlier today? How many of you figured that, hmm, around 12, 24, you're going to mess something up? 
whether it's your attitude, whether it's your facial expressions, whether it's your pastor, can you go ahead with it? I'm trying to teach you something. Jesus rode in peace so that we could live in peace with our humanity, not with your sin, but with your propensity to sin. And finally, Jesus rode in peace so that we could live at peace in a dying world. Charles Spurgeon wrote, Spurgeon wrote, we live in a land of the dying, uh, but we long to make it to the land of the living. Jesus rode in peace so that we could live in peace in a world, uh, in a dying world. And in this world in which we live, uh, he, 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 he rode in peace so that we could live in peace in a world that, where the headlines just from this past week and a half Somebody give me a headline from this last week and a half. Virginia Beach, two dead, eight injured in the shooting at Virginia Beach, and one cop who shot a man dead didn't activate his body cam. How many of you need some peace so you can live in that kind of world? Give me another headline. Come on. Okay, get, give me another headline. Somebody give me another. Oh, Colorado. Are you serious? I need Jesus to give me some peace in here so I can live in that world out there where a man can go in a supermarket, shoot 10 people, and that man can survive and come out. And where we know some people, you hold up a cell phone and say, don't shoot, and guess what? You're going to get shot. I need some peace in here so I can live in a world like that out there. Can I get an amen? Can I get another headline from this week? Oh, Georgia. Woo! It's the voter suppression law. Can't even take food and water to a person in line. Oh my God. I need peace in here so that I can live with the world out there. Can I get an amen? amen. Jesus rode in peace so that we could live at peace in that kind of world. Somebody give me another headline. Oh, the violence against Asians. Oh my God. People are just pushing Asians down, and just because somebody said that uh, um, um, that coronavirus started in a lab in China, I need peace in here so that I can live in a world that's like that out there. Are you with me? Give me two more headlines. How about the tornado? Six killed by the tornado, and you wonder: Is God punishing them? And then you wonder, should I get my stuff straight so God doesn't punish me and us with a tornado? Can I get an amen? amen. Or it might be a hurricane or a flood. Flood, I need peace in here. I don't know about you, but I need peace in here so that I can live in a world that's like that out there. Give me one more headline from the week. Oh my God, the border. You've seen the news story that says thousands of, of unaccompanied minors are coming to the border each day. And I was watching that. Uh, CNN happened to be on. I, CNN is not the backdrop for my life, is it, Believer? YouTube may be, but CNN is not. But I watched it on CNN, and, and I began to feel some sort of way in here. Because I was like, what kind of state are those children in? Then I got mad at them. I'm like, how dare you come to our country and force us to let you in because we're going to take sympathy on you because you're kids. And then I went to, oh my God, maybe they're, what, what, could, what must their conditions be in the country that they live in that they want to come to another place for a new start? And I had to rebuke myself because I had judged them without knowing their situation. I need peace in here. So I can live in a world that is like it is out there. So Jesus rode in peace so that we could live at peace with each other. Jesus rode in peace so that we could live at peace with our own frailty and our own humanity. Jesus rode in peace so that we could live at peace in a dying world. 
Are you with me? Yeah. And so the question is, and then we're going home, how can we have peace really when the world is dying? How can we have peace when the virus is still raging and we hear reports about another strand of the virus that's more deadly than this strand of the virus? How can we have peace when people are still filled with hatred in 2021? How can we have peace when there are natural disasters all around? How can we have peace when people are spreading misinformation and disinformation? How can we have peace during a time like that? Well, let's go back to Miss Summers. She took the $470 that she had and she purchased some peace for herself. Bible tells me about a stranger from Galilee. He was more specifically from Nazareth. He was a stranger in town. He was giving sight to the blind. He turned water into wine. This stranger healed blindness. This same stranger healed leprosy. This same stranger healed all sorts of health problems. Because you remember there was a woman with an issue of blood and she fought through the crowd to get to Jesus. And this stranger, because some people knew him and some people didn't, are you with me? How can we live in a world and have peace in a world like we live in? And, and how can we have peace in here when there's no peace out there? There's a stranger in town, and his name is Jesus. And, and what Jesus did is Jesus went into Jerusalem, and Jesus did not just have a, a, a donkey. He did not just have a, 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 an entourage, but Jesus had a wife. Did anybody know that Jesus had a wad of cash? You know, like when you get paid and before you had direct deposit, you thought you were rich, you went to the cash place and got your check, and you had that $272 wrapped up in your pocket, and you asked them to give you 50 ones so the wad looked bigger, and you had the 50 ones on the inside, and you had the other 20s on the outside, and you walked around and you pulled all your money out. <laughs> to something you because it looked like you had a wad are you with me where well, Jesus didn't have a play play wad Jesus had a for real wad because he had to pay for some stuff y'all Jesus had to go on the cross and he had to pay for our salvation aren't you glad he paid for your salvation Jesus not only paid for your salvation but Jesus made it rain and he dropped some money on your peace and so that no matter what comes and no matter what goes and no matter what they say about you no matter what they do to you no matter what the enemy brings your peace is paid for the songwriter said Jesus paid it all all to him I owe Jesus paid it all he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed Jesus paid the price for your peace on Calvary at the cross at the cross where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away it was there by faith I received my sight it was there by faith I received my peace it was at the cross that I got my joy it was at the cross that I was redeemed I was bought with the price Jesus 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 
Jesus, oh Jesus, has changed my whole life. If anybody asks you, if my mama asks you, if my daddy asks you, if my wife asks you, if my son asks you, if anybody asks you just who I am, you can tell them that I am. I am, I am, I am, I am, I'm redeemed. He bought my peace at Calvary. He bought my joy at Calvary. He bought my life at Calvary. He bought my peace with his blood. I can live at peace. Because Jesus rode in peace. This joy I have. This love I have. This peace I have. The world didn't give it to me. As a matter of fact, you can attest to the same thing I can attest to. The world did everything they could to take this peace away from you. To take this joy away from you. Can I get an amen? To take this love away from you. But this joy that I have, the world didn't give it. This peace that I have, the world didn't give it. And because the world didn't give it, the world can't take it away. Jesus wrote in peace. So that you and I could live at peace. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should you feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should your heart feel lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is a constant friend is he his eye is on the sparrow and you have to know you got to know that you know you got to know that you know that you know that you know that you know that he watches you and when the enemy tries to steal your peace, you can tell the enemy, I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. There's nothing you can do to hurt me, devil. I sing because I'm free from your schemes, free from the weapons that you've tried to form against me. I am free free from the bondage of sin. I am free from that pain that's been racking my body because you know what? I'm keeping my eyes on Jesus. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow.
Romans 10 and 9 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Will you know this kind of peace today? Will you come?
That was his real name. Deja, you all has come uh, for salvation, seeking Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I need you to repeat after me, okay? Heavenly Father, I am a sinner. I have no goodness of my own. But I have heard the word of Jesus. And I believe that you sent your son to die for my sin. And I accept your salvation in my heart, in my life, in my mind. I give you my life for the rest of my life. I will never be the same. You got to say it with fervor. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah! Come on with your baby. This is Brother Deontay and Sisters Talisha's uh, boo. This is their baby. Hallelujah! And she will be baptized. She'll be baptized. Them. She was going to be baptized. We'll set a date with, with, for her parents, with her parents. And Daisha, I knew I was going to get that right. And we, we, we will set a date for baptism. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. And okay, don't forget to get your gifts together. The small little houses, the blue and white box on this side and the brown box and black box are for foreign missions this Sunday. Just only on fourth Sunday. We ask for a dollar and the other is for regular offering. Uh, if all hearts and minds okay. Amen. Come on Sister Parker, come on. Sister Parker has surgery tomorrow. You all bear with us just for just a second. She has surgery tomorrow. She's getting her first cancer treatment tomorrow. Amen. All right. Come on, stretch forth your hand towards Sister Parker. Mm. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now on behalf of Sister Parker, Lord. Lord, she's not the first person to be healed from cancer, and she won't be the last, God. Lord, just let her know that she's on this side of the blessing, Lord, and, and that there's a blessing on the other side of through, God. Protect her heart and her mind and her spirit while she goes through treatment, God. Lord, we pray that she would keep her face toward Jerusalem and she would keep her eyes to the hills which cometh her help because her help does come from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not suffer her foot to be moved. The Lord who keepeth you, Sister Parker, does not slumber or sleep. So the sun won't smite you by day and the moon won't smite you by night. God, he that keepeth thee and keeps thy soul will keep it forevermore. And Lord, we pray right now that you would keep her mind in perfect peace, that she would not be anxious for anything, but with prayer and, th and supplication, with thanksgiving, let her request be made known unto you. And the peace of God, the peace of God, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard her more heart and mind through Christ Jesus our Lord. So we pray that you would make sure, make certain that her body is prepared for this treatment, God. You, you made our bodies, God. You know each cell. You know each organ. You know each organism. You know about us, God. You made us. And so, God, we pray that you would strengthen her body and strengthen her mind, strengthen her spirit. We declare and decree right now in the name of Jesus that you will have your way in her body. We declare and decree that you are God, you are sovereign, and there is none like you. And we know that you have heard her prayer, God, and we know that you will, uh, have heard our prayer, God. So touch, heal, and deliver right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now may the love of God and the 
sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Rest, rule, and abide with each of us, henceforth, now, and forever. And all of God's people said, Amen, Amen, Amen.